My average fuel has dropped now to 14.9 miles to the gallon. I can't wait to get back to the motorway. Good morning, welcome to the channel. You're joining me somewhere in Scotland. I don't know where. And I'm at a Range Rover L322 3.6 V8, so it's the perfect car for the job. It is not my dad's from a previous video. It's someone else's I've managed to get my hands on. And I have one huge complaint about this car. It is far too comfortable. You just fall asleep. I've done 200 miles in it so far up the M6 mostly. And to stay awake was a challenge in itself. And I don't know how people in Rolls Royces manage. I feel for them guys. If you own a Rolls Royce, I don't know how you do it. But yeah, the heated steering wheel, heated seats, dead quiet inside, really relaxing. Super comfy armchair, armrests, extra armrests. It's too comfortable. They need to tone it down a bit, I think. I've had to keep the window cracked most of the way up the M6 just to stay awake. But other than that, it is a bloody lovely place to be. I really, really like it. And I think I'm gonna have to sell my Touareg and buy one because it drives so much better and it's so much more comfortable. And it's nearly as economical and it's a V8 over a V6. But there will be a lot more to go wrong. And in the long run, I think it will cost a lot more money to own. But is it worth that extra money? Because it's such a nice place to be and it drives so well. I got on the motorway, it was so relaxed. And now I'm on these insane Scottish B roads. I don't know, this is an A road apparently. Yeah, A712. Looks more like a B road to me. Anyway, now it's on these B roads. It just handles like a dream. I'm guessing it's the air suspension as self-leveling. And it just, it's, it goes around corners beautifully and quite fast. And I've got a trailer on the back as well. Can't really tell it's there, to be honest. There's nothing on it at the moment. But it's just, it's like it's not even there. If I didn't look in my mirrors, I wouldn't know. It's just so comfortable. You don't know you're driving half the time. This is a 2010 model. I don't know how many miles are on it. Let me see if I can find out. I'm still trying to learn my way around it. 132,614 miles, which is quite a lot, isn't it? And it feels like it's not done that. My Touareg is off the road for a few days because of injector issues. So I thought I'll get my hands on something better. And then when I go back to my Touareg, I'll just be really upset driving every day. I haven't thought this through, have I? So I think this makes a pretty good towing car because I don't even know there's a trailer on the back right now. Until I look in my mirror, I can, it's not even there. You don't know. The leveling suspension, the air compression system thingamabob, levels it out. So if you've got more weight on the back, it just pushes the back up more. It just pumps the airbags up more. So you, you don't really feel like you've got anything on. And because the trailer only weighs half a ton empty, it's like there's nothing there. On the Touareg though, you can feel it because it's not got air suspension. They do come with air suspension as an optional extra, but like this, it is something to go wrong and it will cost you quite a bit of money. But is it worth it? I think it might be worth it. I need to look into the repair prices, but I know it's not cheap. Just depends how often it goes wrong. Any real Range Rover owners or Touareg owners with air suspension got any real figures, comment them below. Tell you what, this thing, even around these bends, it's lovely to drive with a trailer on the back. So what's it like without a trailer? I need one of these cars in my life. I really want one. To say that though, my dad's one is, is the same as this, but a couple of years older has just gone into a Land Rover specialist because it's making some funny noises. 
and he's been told that I think pretty much the whole rear end of the car needs replacing and it's going to cost a um, large sum of money. So maybe I shouldn't buy one, but it's a Range Rover in it. I want one. Who doesn't want a Range Rover? Whoa, there's a dam. Damn, Daniel. And a cave. Okay, I've decided that I'm gonna save up my money and buy a Range Rover. I don't care if it breaks down. If you like to hear people waffling on about cars, subscribe to the channel. I feel like I could do a lot of waffling on about Range Rovers. Look at the roads, it's beautiful up here. And this car, is, it just feels right. I'm in the right place. It grips the road so well. It's a two and a half ton car. My Touareg's a two and a half ton car and this feels so much lighter. I don't know if that's the extra power in the engine or I guess it's the extra power mixed with the air suspension. It just makes it feel light and it's like you're floating down the road. Come on in. Scotland's cool. I want to come up here and go camping. The thing I'm on my way to pick up today is a bit of a machine. You'll have to see it to uh, understand what I mean. But I wouldn't say it's fast. Probably make it fast, but it won't be standard. But it is cool and it's not something you see every day, especially on a car channel. I'm not normally a fan of cream leather, but in this car, I think it goes really well. I don't know if I could have it as a working car because getting in and out all the time, filthy, doing recoveries and stuff. But if I had one of these for the more luxurious side of life, I think it would be quite nice. I've never had a car with cream leather in my life. I've got a digital dash in this one as well. He doesn't have that in Dad's. Ha, sorry, Dad. <laughs> But I like it. He says he doesn't like them anyway, but I think he's just saying that because I've got one and he doesn't. But I really like it. There's something very futuristic about it. It's from 2010 now, so it's not that futuristic, but it's cool. It's not like what you get in a Honda E or even any new car nowadays. They all seem to be just, just screens everywhere. I don't know how you're meant to see the road. Especially all the electric cars, they seem to go overboard with the screens. It's like pin my ride back in the day. I've got hold of the electric cars and just gone mad, putting TVs everywhere. Compared to my Touareg, this is definitely a nicer place to be. It's a nicer drive. It's a nicer engine. I'm struggling of reasons to keep the Touareg. Anyone want to buy a Touareg 2005 V6? 138,000 miles on it. Comment below. Or even better, anyone got a Range Rover and they want to swap me a Touareg? Touaregs are better in every way. You should swap me. Look at this lovely little Scottish village. Scotland is nice. I like it. Whoa, didn't like that. There's no one. Does anyone live in Scotland? I've not seen anyone for a while. It's very, very quiet. Almost too quiet. Ah, oh, there's a friend in a car. E65 series. Hello, friend. It's not too quiet after all. I was worried though. I thought it was going to be a zombie apocalypse. If there was a zombie apocalypse, I'd like to have this car with some big mud tires on it. And I'd like to come and hide in Scotland. I think that'd be the right thing to do. And this car would probably get you to most places.
be like my dumper truck. It weighs the same as this car, two and a half ton. But with the trailer, it should weigh around three ton. So we're still half a ton under the limit for this car's towing capabilities. And it's pulling well, I've just come up a huge hill. And I would touch wood, but there isn't any in here. It's doing well. I can feel that it's there though. It does feel extremely heavy. It's quite scary around these Scottish roads with all the bends and the big drops. But the Range Rover is doing very well, as expected. It could pull anything, this. It took two hours and me and two other men to get that thing on the back. There's no steering on it and it was all seized up. So we got it unseized-ish and managed to just use the winch going from side to side to get it straight up on the trailer and it was a nightmare. But it's on. That was the hard part, I hope. I've just got to get it back to where it's going now. When we loaded it up, I put, well, once we'd finished loading, I pressed the air suspension button and it leveled it out completely. And it's incredible. If I put that on the back of my Touareg, it'd drop the back of the Touareg right down. And I've got a boot full of heavy stuff in here as well. These aren't the most ideal roads for pulling something like that but at least they're quiet it's scary though you just don't know what's around every bend and got that thing on the back thank god they got new brakes on the trailer another thing about this car this morning on the way up here it just ate the miles up the time absolutely flew by i was just seeing service station after service station and thinking Oh, have I got there so fast? It's just, I think it's the comfortability of it. And that is a word. It's nice up in Scotland though, isn't it? It's beautiful. I've just zoomed myself on the camera. And I feel like I look so small in this gigantic chair. If you saw me, and you didn't know there was a thumper on the back, would you know? It just looks like I'm driving around relaxed in a Range Rover, doesn't it? Having a little look around Scotland. Holding everyone up on the A-roads. And it's because of the way it's built, it's just so nice to drive and smooth. And with the airbag suspension, it's just floaty. It's the best word for it. I'm getting overtaken. You bastards. I actually like it when people overtake me. You don't see enough of it anymore. One person on a country lane doing 25 mile an hour in a national speed limit area, and you'll have 10 cars just sat behind them going down a straight. And it'll be clear. Why? Come on, get a move on. Beeping won't make the cars go any faster, Daddy Pig. We just have to be patient. Ten years ago, everyone had just been past them. It was normal. Driving's changed so much in this country. I should have brought my flat cap with me to just blend in as a farmer. I hate slowing people down. So thinking about it, if I could go back to before I bought the Touareg and buy one of these instead, I probably would. I'd just be terrified of the maintenance. But it's a Range Rover and you just get that warm feeling that you're annoying people, don't you? My average fuel has dropped now to 14.9 miles to the gallon. I can't wait to get back to the motorway. I am very impressed with this car. It's just easier to handle the weight than it would be in the Touareg. I pulled two and a half ton cars with the Touareg, so very similar. Apart from the weight and that's probably a bit higher. So I'll make it harder for this. And this is a, mo a more relaxed drive. I'm not having to do as much and it's 100% down to that air suspension, I think. And even on these awful roads as well. When I say awful roads, 
They're amazing roads. Just not so good for towing. See how bendy it is now, and I've got a van right up my trumpet. A little bit of sun in Scotland, that's rare. Oh, this is quite relaxed though. I'm doing 55 and the trailer's running straight. Wasn't sure which way to load the dumper because who knows which end of a dumper weighs more. The two guys there didn't. They wanted to put it on forward. I said no backwards, the engine's in the back. And I feel like the engine will weigh more than the empty box because it's designed to carry weight in the box. So they're going to make that end lighter, surely. So it's on backwards and I can do some speed and it's running straight, so I'm happy. This Range Rover's good. Is it the best towing car for under £10,000? I think it quite might be, yeah. But you probably end up spending a lot more on one, on maintenance. But it's worth it because you get to drive around in a Range Rover, annoy people, have some self-entitlement just because you're in a Range Rover. You all know you get it, everyone who's driven one. It's just a thing that happens. It's weird. <laughs> Big up the Brian James trailer. Has anyone else put a dumper truck on one? I'm sure it has been done. I wonder what the new ones are like to tow with. I bet they're nice. They're too round on the outside, but I bet the inside of them is a lovely place to live. This is the first car I've properly driven with a digital screen thing and it's a bit like a game it doesn't feel as real as a normal car because it's not real is it it's like you're looking at an arcade game like how do you know that that that's what it's doing that could be a screen linked to another range rover in like south africa or something couldn't it it's disorientating V8. It does sound good on standard exhaust. It's not loud, but you don't want it to be really, do you? But it sounds nice. It's got a deep, throaty tone to it. So, to sum up, I think this is probably the best towing car you can get for under 10 grand. It's just so much car. You can get other things like one of them. Actually, they're expensive now, the Land Cruisers. They cost a fortune. The only options you actually really have to tow as much as you can for a proper good towing car is the Range Rover, Touaregs, a few others that aren't even worth mentioning, then loads of pickup trucks. But no pickup truck is as nice as this inside or to drive. So I think this is the best towing car for under 10 grand. But you can't buy one of these commercially. It's not a commercial vehicle, so you can't put it through the business like you can a pickup truck. Caravans! But, whatever it is, it's a Range Rover. You can use this at the weekends to take your kids out or your mother-in-law or the dog. Range Rover towing, all right, mate. I would say everything in this is a bit more convenient than the Touareg as well. Like, it's all in better places except for the window switches. They should be down here, but I think maybe they've tried to save space in the cabin by putting them up there instead of having that wider. So it might be worth it. It's not that far to reach. But if you're in the passenger seat and you sat right the way back, then it is. But I suppose you just ask your driver to put the window down. I've made it back to the M6 and there's a beautiful sunset over the Lake District Hills. So I thought I'd turn the cameras back on and say, look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? I like the way the trees are like silhouettes. It's cool. But yeah, Range Rover's doing very well. Touch wood. Nothing's gone wrong yet. I say yet because it's Range Rover. But I love it, it's doing well. I feel right at home in here. I've not driven many L322s, but 
after 350-ish miles and this today. I, I feel like it's my car. I don't feel like I'm driving someone else's car. It just feels right. I want one. Now I'm driving in what is essentially a straight line. It's so much more relaxed than the Touareg. Like, I've got one finger on the wheel and I've got a two and a half ton dump truck on the back. And it's not pulling the car around in the Touareg. You kind of have to move the steering wheel quite a lot just to go on a straight line. Whereas in this, it's just doing it. I really, really like it. It's got a bit of wheel wobble, which I'm guessing is just the wheel balancing. But even with that, it's still going dead straight. I like it. I think we'll end it there anyway. If you've enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe like it and comment let me know what you think and see you in the next one bye bye